good morning uh, professor uh, uh, yao kk and uh, uh, professor ngoc phang nguyen chairperson and all panelists first of all i uh, would like to thank the uh, organizing committee for inviting uh, vietnam national health institute to join in wonderful this meeting so i uh, introduce our team i uh, uh, dr hung by myself dr dad uh, dr viet anh and we have another dr uh, tuấn uh, we do the IVERT. So uh, I uh, would like to introduce uh, Dr. Dad. We uh, introduce about the case that we, we do today. Dr. Dad, please. Yes. Vietnam National Health Institute, BNHI, established in 1989, is a national and regional referral center for cardiovascular diseases. As an ultra-specialized hospital center, BNHI is dedicated to care, research, education, prevention, rehabilitation, and the assessment of new technologies in cardiology, playing a leading role in Vietnam and the ASEAN. Each year, BNHI does over 12,000 interventional procedures, 1,000 surgeries, and take care of 26,000 inpatients. As an affiliated training institution of Hanoi Medical University, BNHI is a prestigious study and apprenticeship destination for many international fellows. We are actively engaged in a broad range of clinical and basic science research with multiple national and international clinical trials. Our every effort is for one singular goal, for every Vietnamese person to have a healthy heart, because we cherish every heartbeat. Can you hear us? So, what can you hear me clearly? Please go ahead and uh, tell us about the case. Yes, uh, good morning, Prof. Good yes, morning, uh, panelists. I'll go ahead and uh, present the case. Yes, so I could like to present the case, the complex PCI blood main replication. So, this uh, this one is uh, 60, uh, 68 male uh, patient, and uh, respect to consider hypertension and smoking. The past medical history of patient, patient suffer from the multiple PCI. So in November 2018, the patient had the PCI 2D as the proximal RCI and the proximal uh, circumflex. And at this time, the patient still have the residuals as tenosis about 80% of proximal to middle to LED. So one month later, this lesion was fixed with the 2D as. So the clinical present, uh, uh, presentation, so uh, one week ago, the patient suffered from the typical chest pain and the melena, and he was diagnosed with the GI bleeding and associated with the myocardial infections. Uh, so after GI bleeding happened with the hemoglobin, that's only the 77, and uh, hypovolemia was noted, and gastric also were diagnosed uh, by endoscopy. So in this uh, active bleeding scenario, the anti blood blood therapy was discontinued, and when you needed the red blood cells were transfused, then luckily the hemoglobin increased to the 112 uh, after the three days. So due to the ongoing chest pain, the stable angina after one week, the anti blood blood was given again and the coronary angiography was performed. So uh, a test was done a few days ago, reviewed the bifurcation this the lab main, and a significant instant risk that is it, uh, at the mid LED. And, uh, we, in terms of the complex PCI, the patient underwent the heart team discussion and came with the first recommendation, but he declined. So laboratory test uh, investigation, I would like to emphasize the hemoglobin and troponin result. So as you can see, the hemoglobin increased gradually from the 77 to the 112 after the uh, blood infusion. And troponin T increased significantly from the 100 uh, to the 150 as uh, 10 times higher as normal range. So in ECG, the standard rhythm uh, reveal the, the STEMI uh, with SD elevated from the V1 to V3 and AVR, and it called that e, with the low EF, that's only the 45%. A kinesis to the mid posterior and the basal posterior, and hypokinesis to the basal inferior wall. And upper endoscopy, there's no active bleeding, and luckily that there are some the small gastric ulcer in the wide basement. So this is the coronary angiography was done a few days ago. And as you can see in the IO view, there are some lesions 
uh, uh, with a significant lesion in the middle part of the left man. And as you can see, that we see the, the standard, the proximal mode of surf uh, is patent, but looks hazy just before the standard. I think that we should check the eye with this, this lesion. And the aerial uh, cranial view that you can see that um, the tandem lesion in standard with the mid LED and the eccentric lesion at the distal part of the, of the left man. So I think that is the best view. To, uh, you could appreciate the left band distal bifurcation in the spider view. The coronary angiogram that we change to the right side. Uh, luckily, the, the, the previous stand um, in the right side is still patent and as they look very touches. So a lot of, um, of, of score uh, it was able to evaluate the, the patient risk and the same stock score that's uh, 40 point and error score the uh, 3% and, uh, the, and another some bleeding uh, score we evaluate and the patient in the high risk uh, population uh, of bleeding. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to raise some questions. Uh, what about the hemodynamic support of a patient imaging to do the references side, the calcium and osteum evaluation, and the listen preparation, and how to choose the guideline, the balloon and stand, and how to treat the instant with strategy at the mid part of the LED? And what about the two stand techniques strategy we will use and the final optimization? And also, in this, uh, uh, in this particular patient, what about the diabetes duration after the PCI? And we would like to hear the comment from the, the chairman and panelists. Okay, thank you. Can I hear some comments from uh, panelists? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Das, for the... Yes, uh, we already see the case with the uh, distal left main bifurcation on stable uh, GI bleeding, and uh, I would like to see the comment from the panelists. Uh, first of all, I would like to hear the, uh, of the comment from uh, Dr. Lee. Uh, yes, um, so I think... Uh, uh, you can uh, you have to face a, a really complex uh, patient's complex uh, anatomy and also um, uh, complex uh, uh, situations with a high bleeding risk. Um, so I think um, typically this is uh, the case for for surgery. I agree. Uh, bypass would be the first option of patients, but uh, if patient refuses and then in for PCI, then we um, uh, need a well plan. Um, uh, for the instant resynthesis um, of, uh, of LED, I think um, EB can be an option because uh, definitely you don't want to put more metal inside of, of, uh, of uh, the vessel. Um, I totally agree that uh, that uh, uh, imaging um, will play an important role in this case because we have to define if there is a real um, a lesions at the circumflex the osseum. Um, so that a um, uh, strategy of two stand can be decided. So uh, you. you prefer like a two stand uh, strategy and also DAB, uh, DAB for the, the uh, OED, right? Yes. So I would like to hear the uh, option from uh, Dr. Junko Honi from Japan. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, this patient uh, has a very high bleeding risk and uh, uh, a pretty low ejection fraction. However, uh, I believe that uh, in this patient, you already uh, fixed the right coronary artery so that uh, uh, without any hemodynamics support, we uh, would like to proceed with the procedure. And uh, the option for thinking is that uh, uh, thinking about this lesion is rapidly progressed, so that means uh, these lesions uh, from left main to both LAD and circumflex is not so rigid. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of calcium. So I would like to, uh, of course, uh, uh, you, uh, I, was, uh, I would use IVAS uh, uh, pullback from both uh, LAD from left main and circumflex to left main. And probably I would uh, do a, a crossover stinting from LAD to circumflex. And uh, if possible, I would dilate with the scoring balloon at the ostium of the uh, circumflex and followed by a uh, drug coating balloon. Okay, so, so you, you do the IVERT first and then see if the uh, cert is okay and then you just cross over uh, left main already with the one stand. And finish the fractional optimization. Okay, so I would like to hear the voice uh, from the Dr. Gusta Kumar. Um, a great, uh, complicated, uh, very complex case with uh, multiple different uh, issues that need to be looked at. 
I think uh, I would actually favor a very simple strategy in this case, uh, which would probably be IVAS both vessels followed by um, a single stand provisional strategy for the CERC, perhaps leaving a wire in the CERC and uh, jailing that wire and to see how that goes after uh, you get uh, you get across. And if that goes fine and the CERC looks good, probably just provisional balloon of the stand struts. That's it. Okay, so uh, Dr. Kumas from US also prefer the simple strategy. I would like to hear the voice from Dr. Omar. Uh, so uh, thank you for a nice case, uh, very complex. Um, I think this, in this case, IVERS is mandatory because it can failure very early. Um, but of course, the, um, I would favor a very simple strategy as well because you know, he's got a piece of bleeding. If you put two stands, uh, you have to stop the APT, the, the piece of composition is going to be very high. So I think I, I was going to you know, sort of IVERS let, um, let me into LED to serve. Uh, probably maybe some under expansion of the LED stand is possible, so you dilate it well, and there's a left main to LED stand across. So, uh, problems uh, on the panelists already, uh, I, I think uh, most of us uh, prefer to see the how the IVERS, and then we decided that strategy, and almost the doctor here is required to prefer like a simple strategy uh, to avoid the risk of bleeding later on. Okay, thank you. Can you okay. show us the IVERS? Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Kuang. Actually, we already have done um, uh, Kuang geography again. So, can you uh, see uh, this the recent uh, image uh, from angiography observation first? Do you see that? Yes, we Dr. can see. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. So, now we uh, move to the IVERS. We already done uh, IVERS. So, yes, yeah, uh, Dr. Da, please show the IVERS. Can you see IVERS? Okay, so I'm going to tell about the IVERS. Yeah, it comes. Yes, we can see yes, it. Yes, we, we, we put the IVERS uh, to the least part of the LED and just beyond the lesions. It looks like uh, the, the 2.5 the two uh, lesion and it's coming to the sun. And this, this part, uh, it's a this part of the stand to look healthy. And the lesion is coming to start the lesion. There are, uh, looks like a tendon lesion here. This one, the uh, eccentric breeze stand is it is then, and you look at the stand, it looks like a mouth, the position. This one contributed to the breeze stand, stand is it is quite soon. Just after one year, the PCI. The stand, the previous stand, looked quite small compared to the to the to the um, band measure of the of the diameters of the, of the normal measures, and this one the eccentric lesion at the six six o'clock. We are going to the possible part of the stand. So we're coming back there before the stand. And you can see that very tight lesion here at the proximal of IOD. And the same is coming, the same is coming at the no, 8 o'clock. The same is coming at the 8, uh, at the 7 to 8 o'clock and very tight lesion at the ostium the LED, extending to the distal part of the lab main. And the ostium lab main is look quite normal here. So the second run, so the second run we do the IVERS. We want to the focus on the IVERS, on the the the, 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 the Austin part of the LED. The Austin part of the LED here, you can see that the search coming from the from the seven o'clock, and you can see very clearly about the reason that the Austin the left hand. So the final one, we do the IVERS from the. But this is the part of the uh, second flux, just before the, the previous stand. So you can see that some uh, orange branch is coming, and we're going to the, the list the end of the stand. Compared to the hazy list on the angiography, we can see that there are some lesions at the least part of the, of the second flux. It's much work, I think, on the angiography. Understand, and the doesn't look like a three, five. 
At the same scenario with the LED, the man opposition of the stem is to make the wrist when the wrist is in stem. So it's coming back to the possible of the, of the second flex, and you, as you can see that uh, some focal comes in with the possible of the, of the second flex, and also have the very tight knees and there's an osteo with uh, LED extending to the distal part of the left hand. So with it, in particular lesion, I think that because the frequency between the side of the osteo LED and circumflex, uh, we, we measure about the uh, uh, MLA of the osteo of the LED, and as you can see that uh, nearly about the MLA is of uh, 5.1 mm square in the uh, osteo of the LED, and what about the left main? The left main LED, uh, the left main is uh, nearly about the uh, 5.39 mm square in the MLA. With the second flex, we also we check the MLA, it's actually the 3.21 mm square. So in this particular region, because of this frequency side between the osteo and the LED and serve, I think that the decay cross is, uh, is suitable for this uh, particular region. Thank you, Dr. Dad. Uh, we would like to hear some comments from the panelists. So, thanks for the very nice description of the uh, angiogram and the IVUS. Can I invite uh, uh, Dr. Kajia to make a comment? Thank you, Chairman. So, from this IVUS image, uh, I think the osteo of the circumflex is not so tight region. And uh, as uh, other commentator already told, uh, I try a, a single uh, stand from left main to LED, and uh, uh, after pot, uh, we consider CBT or not. What about Dr. Gupta? I think uh, considering the circumflex, I don't think the circumflex is very large vessel in this particular patient, and the disease on the circumflex ostium is very focal. And the left main is diffusely diseased, I think, up to the ostium and the short left main. So I think maybe stenting from left main ostium into the proximal LED, doing optimization of the left main with at least a 4.5 millimeter balloon, and then KBT with two NC balloons uh, and keep the circumflex open would be better because this patient has high bleeding risk, so we want to avoid complex stenting. What about you, Dr. Dad? Uh, sorry, Dr. Chen. Uh, I would uh, put the IFR to the circ and uh, to check for the significant lesion and uh, then we decide uh, what the strategy we should do. Yeah. Uh, we have Dr. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Chuang. Uh, I agree with Dr. Ching because uh, we need to do uh, FFR or IFR for circumflex uh, to make sure that it's the uh, F, uh, ischemia for the circumflex uh, area or not before we, we decide to do the PCI for the patient. And, and maybe last from Dr. Kato, it's, would you agree with the previous panelists? Yes, yes, I think so. so. Uh, after uh, this patient is high risk, so I recommend to uh, LED to left main standing. And after that, uh, we check if if need to we check our IFR So maybe I can summarize uh, some of the comments, uh, Prof. Hong. Um, the, the panelists have given a few uh, uh, ideas, but number one, I think they were keen to leave, to not to do too much to the circumflex, and secondly, uh, to consider the role of uh, some functional um, FFR to the to the CERC to see whether that needs to be treated. Tell us your strategy. Okay, thank you uh, for the all comment. I uh, totally agree with you. We uh, intend to have a strategy something like that, but uh, actually after doing uh, IVERS, uh, the patient uh, get uh, get down the hemodynamic and uh, blood pressure a little bit go down, and we have to decide to. Uh, balloon for the uh, left main uh, immediately, and after that we get some uh, uh, slow flow to the uh, uh, circumflex. So uh, we change our strategy, come from uh, uh, provisional stenting to uh, uh, EK crush. So uh, I would like to show you what we have done already in case in, in this patient uh, a few minutes ago. So can you show the picture, please? Nice, please. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yes, in uh, after doing the IVERS, uh, patient uh, have a little bit uh, of doubt uh, in the hemodynamic, so we decide to uh, open the left main immediately. And after using the balloon to open the left main, uh, 
we found that uh, may have uh, some uh, blood shipping to the LCA, so that's why we decide to uh, change our strategy that uh, to uh, go ahead to do uh, uh, TK crush technique. So can you show uh, us the next? Okay, so we uh, free the left, this, this one with the balloon. And then you can see here after the gravitation and the blood pressure a little bit uh, recover. Nice place. And here. And then we uh, put a stain in the LCA with a very uh, about uh, 2 mm uh, protrude to the left mid. Nice place. Okay, can you see uh, see uh, clearly? Next, please. Next, please. This is very clear. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Next, please. Okay. And then we crush. Uh, next, please. Okay. Next, please. Next. Okay, next. Next. Okay, now we use the run through to rewind to the most proximal uh, of the L6. Yeah, proximal cell of the L6. Okay, next bit. Okay, we can go here. Yeah, next. Okay, and then we uh, use balloon. Next, please. Yes, alternative uh, balloon uh, inflation with uh, L6 and uh, LED to left main. And then it's, I think, the first piece. <laughs> OK. Yeah, the first kit. And, and at that time, the uh, uh, hemodynamic of the patient is very stable. So. Uh, we uh, go to uh, fix the lesion in the uh, risk deposit at the middle of our LAD. So in this case, we uh, pre-dilated the high-pressure balloon uh, 275 by 20 up to 18 uh, a.m. ATM. Yeah. And then we use the uh, uh, 275 uh, VEB balloon by 30, yeah. By 30 for one minute. So this is uh, after uh, we, we have just uh, fixed the uh, um, mid uh, lesion risk related as uh, LED. I think this uh, uh, reason is acceptable for us. So do you have any comment at this point? Um, actually, I was going to ask uh, two questions. One is that for the mid LED yes. stenosis, yes. would you? I I didn't quite catch, but did you use any form of uh, scoring or cutting balloon um, to deal with the plug? Uh, in in my plans, we try to uh, have uh, something like a cutting balloon, but uh, because this uh, the patients already have uh, something changed in the hemodynamics, so we uh, decide to do it uh, in the plastic way for this uh, patient. Uh, because I think that uh, in the eye work, the blood is look quite soft, and the balloon is very easy to go down, so we decide to use the normal balloon drop. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I want to ask Dr. Kumar this question. Uh, would you consider a balloon pump in this case? Yeah, I mean, uh, given uh, the uh, you know, given the blood pressure getting soft and things like that, it might have been worthwhile to consider at least having an access uh, for a balloon pump. Whether or not you're going to actually put it in is maybe a different story, but at least maybe a forefront sheet might be a yes. reasonable move so that you can put one in quickly if you need to. Thank you. Actually, we uh, uh, also were prepared in uh, standby uh, another six friends or uh, sheets in the lab uh, artery. Uh, yeah. Okay, now I think. Yeah, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, we uh, 
Uh, now I think I, I can choose uh, one uh, stand to push from the LD to left main. So uh, uh, under the right from the iverse, the diameter is something about the uh, 3.5. Even previous span, that's only uh, 3 or 7, uh, uh, 275. So I think I, I, uh, I would like to choose uh, uh, 3.5 by uh, 28. Uh, uh, synergy stand come from the uh, in connect to the uh, previous stand to the mid part of the left main. Yeah. So uh, can you please bring the yeah. So in time waiting for perform you're doing the, the standing, I would like to ask a question. Well, if I can I can yes. Yes. Uh, if uh, we come back to the uh, to, to the step when we uh, actually I have a question for okay. for for you. Yes. yes. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, thanks, thanks. Uh, sorry to interrupt. But the question I have is, uh, can you tell us your thinking about the choice of stent in yeah. this case? Yes, because uh, thinking the choice of stent in this case, we have to consider about the very high risk of bleeding. So uh, I would like to choose the very newest generation of stent with uh, some uh, recent uh, study can show that we can cut off the DAPT for very soft. And the uh, second thing, I would like to uh, choose uh, one uh, kind of stand so that can increase the size a little bit um, further because in this case, we have uh, some mismatch between the diameter in the LED and left main. So LED just only uh, 3.5, but left main something around the 4.5. So I will do the uh, POT uh, after that, so up to the uh, 2.5, uh, so, sorry, uh, 4.5. So uh, that's why I uh, choose uh, some uh, thing like uh, uh, synergy uh, as then. Yes, well, because the synergy has just released the two trial, AVO and AVO2. So uh, the CE market approved the, the stand, the synergy is actually the UBT for that three months in the patient had the high risk bleeding. So that's why we choose the synergy stand for this, uh, this patient. During to see the procedure, I would like to uh, hear the opinion from the panelists and how long for the APT after the case like that. Uh, the Junko. Okay, uh, because uh, this patient, uh, uh, the standing from left main and uh, that means uh, there there are lots of metals around the left main area. So if uh, the bleeding uh, situation, uh, uh, sorry, then I would... Đây là một tổn thương khá là phức tạp, tổn thương ba thân, mạch vành, tổn thương thân trung. Nhưng cái điều phức tạp hơn nữa đó là bệnh nhân đã có sơ thích tiêu hóa. Và mọi người xem hình ảnh chuối vành là cái bệnh nhân vừa có tổn thương tái hẹp và tổn thương thân trung ở chỗ trạc ba. Và theo ý kiến của các chuyên gia thì mọi thì đấy là cái tổn thương phức tạp như thế này và có bệnh nhân tái hẹp trong stent và bệnh nhân nguy cơ xuất hiện cao. Thì lựa chọn ban đầu của các chuyên gia đầu tiên là phẫu thuật cầu nối chủ vành nhưng do bệnh nhân từ chối thì có điều và chúng ta chuyển sang bệnh nhân can thiệp nhưng có can thiệp ở đây thì uh, các chủ tọa đoàn đều khuyên cáo rằng là chọn phương pháp đơn giản nhất họ chọn phương pháp là one stand là một stand là cross over the LED lên bên nhưng uh, trong quá trình can thiệp thì giáo sư nghĩ làm được phương pháp đấy nhưng mà do huyết động khổ ổn định và sau khi nóng bóng dòng chảy chậm tại mũ do đó chúng ta phải chuyển hướng sang dùng phương pháp như cây crash là dùng uh, phương pháp là đặt uh, stand crash trước sau là chúng ta kích sinh balloon hai lần Thế là cái chiến lược đã thay đổi Thế là cái chiến lược từ đơn giản mà chuyển sang sẽ phức tạp hơn và chúng ta nhìn hình ảnh iPod thì thấy rõ rằng là có tái hẹp ở trong stand và cái cơ chế tái hẹp ở đây là over uh, underside tức là cái kích cỡ stand khá là nhỏ so với cái cỡ của bài này cái cơ chế chúng ta nhìn ra tái hẹp và cái tổn thương hai khá khít ở chỗ thân trung và cái thứ hai complex left main to the NAD and the serve so DABT I think just uh, at least for six months uh, in in order to uh, prevent the uh, maze and the thrombosis yeah, at least uh, six months. À, mọi người đang thảo luận là tại sao chúng ta chọn stent CBC và cái thời gian dùng DPT thì bệnh nhân này có nguy cơ xuất hiện rất là cao. Cái điểm mà điểm pre set up là trên 2 năm, tức là bệnh nhân này nguy cơ xuất hiện rất cao. Thì giáo sư đã dùng CBC là dùng stent này có cái cái pre tự tiêu, tức là sau thời gian khoảng 
3 tháng là Primatio chúng ta có thể rút ngắn thời gian xuống từ BP nhưng kỳ uh, kiến của Panis đối cả từ tam hiệp thân trung này chúng ta sẽ phải chọn ít nhất là BP là 6 tháng the duration of the DAP, the DAPT for the patient. In this patient, we uh, should use, uh, we must use uh, IVAC to uh, make sure that the stand in the lab man good acquisition and uh, uh, with the good acquisition like that we uh, decide to use the DAP about, I think, at least six months in this case because a very complex lesion in the LAD to stand in the lab man. So at least six months, and uh, ideal maybe uh, one year for the patient. Uh, Dr. Omar? Uh, the same as well. I mean, I mean, thankfully, we have more data now on uh, short, uh, short DAPT, but I think maybe we need a bit more um, for the data. But, at, but for me, at least uh, six to 12 months, uh, if patient can tolerate DAPT. Yeah. Uh, this is a scenario where you're going to have to think about dynamic DAPT duration. I know nobody really uses that term. Uh, and uh, I would say that, you know, you're going to have to keep a close eye on the patient to a minimum of six months, ideally up to a year. Let's, all the short duration DAPs have not been studied for these kind of bifurcation lesions with overlapping stents, uh, with uh, DK crush technique, for example, and overlaps even distally. There's a lot of metal in there. So I wouldn't say that, you know, a short duration DAP is going to be I adequate for a scenario like this. Yeah, uh, I just uh, want to ask more to the Puma. So if you uh, uh, change from the DAPT to the single like that, what type of drug you choose for the complex uh, application like that? Um, so there is, um, there is some consideration for uh, doing single agent um, uh, ticagrelor from the uh, Twilight trial. Uh, and uh, that's, that, that is one option. I'm not sure that, uh, whether that's available in Vietnam. I'm not aware of that. Uh, I think that's one possibility. Um, again, this yes, has to be balanced against bleeding risk. This may be a patient where he may not tolerate the uh, with the higher risk of bleeding. There is some data that, it, uh, that post-market data that has indicated that there's a higher risk of bleeding with Tachagler. So that obviously has to be balanced here. Prasagrel obviously is not a candidate uh, here. I would not consider Prasagrel. Uh, very nice result there coming up on angiography. Uh, but. Um, Probably, given the bleeding risk, I would stick with Plavix in this case. Uh, I would like to hear the, uh, the option from the Dr. Rusi Kato. Oh, I think uh, this uh, already uh, put a stand with the DK crash. That means uh, left now, part of, part of left main are uh, three layers of metal. So we need uh, at least uh, uh, six months or something. Uh, APT duration. And uh, uh, this patient has a uh, gastrointestinal bleeding risk, so if we, we need uh, just a uh, blood transfusion for this patient, but the uh, left main osteal uh, stent thrombosis is very, very common hope with this patient. Yeah. So uh, the last option we would like to hear from Dr. Kashi. Uh, uh, in my uh, daily practice, uh, if I stand in uh, the main two stand uh, technique, I usually continue DAPT for one year. But uh, in this kind of uh, high rating of patients, um, uh, I think uh, according to the final IVAS image, I'm uh, try to shorten the DAPT period, maybe around uh, six months. So when you do the IVAS to optimize the PCI reason, uh, which criteria you, you prefer, you based on the MLA, you based on the mump position, or, or which one you focus for the IVAS to make sure that the reason for long term is okay? Uh, it's very difficult to answer. Maybe you can ask Dr. Honey. <laughs> okay. Dr. Honey, please. So I... Uh, so you, you already know that the five, six, seven, eight, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, criteria for any one of the things. And, uh, uh, osteo uh, circumflex pipes, uh, square millimeters and, uh, osteo LAD six square millimeters, a polygon, a seven and, uh, uh, left main at least eight square millimeters. And if you, uh, fulfill this, uh, uh measurement, then the, uh, which nosis rate is pretty low. 
And in addition to that, uh, uh, basically the incomplete uh, position is not related to adverse uh, uh, outcome, uh, acute adverse outcome. However, uh, in this uh, particular case, uh, you should uh, 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 minimize the incomplete uh, position as well uh, as possible. Uh, very good point. Uh, Prof Hong, will you tell us uh, where you are in, in yeah, this? Uh, yes, yeah. We see that you've got a very nice looking and geography result. Uh, okay, so I, I already put the stain and then I do the POT with the balloon uh, of 4.0 by 8 uh, up to uh, 14. So now I uh, rewire again to LCA. So as if I I stain, uh, uh, okay. you are here. The, I think the master of the cool up stamping, right? So uh, can you tell us uh, what is uh, the, the more challenging in this DK class or the cool up? Can you compare to them and uh, the challenging part of this? I, I think the uh, uh, Chen that's a good yeah. question. Uh, I think the 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 choice of uh, two stand technique is very dependent on. Uh, personal preference and also experience. I, I must say that I hardly use the DK crush. Uh, my my favorite technique, if I have to put two stands, is uh, culotte. So I, I know that I can get a good result with culotte. If you ask me to do a DK crush, I probably can't do it as good as uh, Prof Hong, for example. So I, I would say that it, a lot depends on the operator's uh, personal preference and style. Uh, but what we do want to say is that uh, having uh, put two stands in, it is very important to optimize, and I think Final kissing balloon pot. Okay. These are important uh, steps which I see the Prof Hong is uh, are doing. Um, I have a question uh, in terms of <clears throat> the 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 choice of um, uh, sizing of the uh, of the, the kissing balloon, uh, final kissing balloon. Um, how do we choose the balloon size? I mean your Left main is a four four five. Uh, how would you choose the size of the balloon in this case in the in the LED and the left main? So for I think for, for the, the final kissing balloon. Yeah, for the final kissing, yeah. I would choose a, a three point five for the left main to LED and uh, 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 two seven five uh, go to the LCS. And uh, uh, after that, uh, at the end, I will uh, do the POT with the four point five. Uh, by eight, because of this, uh, in this case, I uh, found that a little bit uh, mismatch uh, in diameter between the proximal LD and uh, uh, left main. So I, I, I would choose like that based on the inverse guy. So probably okay, if I can have a question for you. I think we should chase. Yeah, thì hôm nay tiến hành cái bước cuối cùng, tức là và sau đó chúng tôi thật là POT là dùng cái bóng nong từ chỗ thân trung đến cái chỗ chọc ba. À, đối chúng ta nghe các chủ tọa đoàn bàn luận về vấn đề là dùng thuốc chống từ tiểu cầu đối với nhân này như thế nào. Thì thấy bệnh nhân này đối cả đang can thiệp thân trung và đặt hai stent thì mọi người đều thống nhất là dùng ít nhất là 6 tháng vào cho mọi người thì đa số là chọn phương án là 12 tháng và lựa chọn thuốc thì với bệnh nhân này nguy cơ chảy máu cao nên cái thuốc DPD ở đây người ta sẽ lựa chọn là clopropylene chứ không có dùng ticagora và prosopren và chúng ta nhìn cái lưu ý rằng là đầu tiên người ta định chọn phương pháp là crossover stent các đặt một stent xong người ta dùng FFA functional oi để người ta đo để xem thực sự là cái, cái mũ nó có hợp khi không thì đấy là cái kế hoạch ban đầu định như vậy. Tức là khi chúng ta dùng một cái dùng một kỹ thuật đặt một stand thì nó có thể chèn vào nhánh bên. Nhưng để đánh giá rằng cái hẹp ở nhánh bên có thực sự hẹp với ý nghĩa không mà theo đúng cái trình bày của bài của bác sĩ Ngọc ấy, thì chúng ta có dùng một phương pháp FBA để đo lại cái nhánh bên là nếu FBA dưới 0.8 thì chúng ta mới can thiệp nhánh bên. Còn nếu FBA 0.8 thì mặc dù ta nhìn trên âm dô là hẹp rất là khít thì có thể không can thiệp. Nhưng cái can này là do cái dòng chảy chậm và huyết đã khổ định thì chúng ta chuyển sang kỹ thuật đặt hai stand. Uh, how you know? It might be worthwhile to look at the panel as well as Prof. Hong to ask uh, what. Uh, how many of you would finish off with the final part? Uh, would you think that that's a good idea or not? 
So I, I think uh, I myself always finish the, uh, the those 10 strategy by part because after you do the kissing balloon, usually for the proximal part of, of the, the stand, you, you have something like a deep form. So that's why you, you need to be POT. And for the long-term run, I think the POT is very important. And even it can... Uh, uh, can explain why the reason of DK crash is good just because you do a lot of uh, port uh, during the procedure. So that's why I think uh, so far uh, port is very important. So what do you think of the, you know? I guess the question is, uh, would you do a port or no port at the end of this case after final kissing? Uh, if the IVAS uh, result uh, is okay, I will uh, I will not uh, perform part. Okay, Dr. Gupta? I think uh, there is a lot of controversy about the final part. Uh, recently, after a lot of OCT studies uh, showing that the final part balloon sometimes is little distal and the carina shifts towards one of the branches. So I agree with uh, Dr. Honia. If you have imaging and you don't have a bottleneck deformity, very obvious bottleneck deformity, then you may not choose to do a final part. But if you don't have imaging and your technique is not a tap, then you finish with the final part, but little proximal to the carina, not like the first part, a little more proximal. Dr. Chen? Uh, usually, is the uh, result is okay. So Angiographically, is okay, so I save from money for my patient. Okay, <laughs> all right. Dr. Lin, Dr. Din? Yes. Uh, yeah. It depends, uh, half half. I think the uh, imaging first to see how is the stand, and then uh, if they have enough uh, space for uh, a pot, because sometimes uh, they can realize that uh, left mini is short and then they don't have enough for a pot, uh, lending us a uh, uh, okay. And Dr. Chong, would you do a pot? Yeah, I will do the pot for the patient. Uh, the same idea, the same opinion with Dr. Kwan. Okay, okay. Yeah. Dr. Omar? Uh, same, I think routinely I would do a final port, but I would like prefer an extra landing zone as well uh, yeah. for the final port. Uh, Dr. Kato? It would definitely depend on the IBAS findings of the caching baron and the baron. Uh, that would be pretty okay. nice. Okay. Uh, I think. Okay. And Dr. Kajia? Uh, uh, it depends on case. So uh, I don't think a final port is mandatory, but uh, the regular, I mean, the port is very important, but the final port, it, I think it's there. Yeah, you know, I, I like this discussion a lot because uh, I remember when I was in training, we didn't do too much of uh, final port. Yeah. We did a lot of final kissing balloon, and then somewhere along the way, we did a lot of ports. And then after a while, less ports, you know, it's, um, it's interesting. Um, so uh, maybe the, the best thing we look at is to see what IVAS shows us. Um, Dr. Ho, could you please uh, show us IVAS if you have already done that? Uh, for for previous, yes, but now uh, not yes. I, I, I still keep doing the kissing. Yeah, I, I, I am uh, going to do the kissing balloon. This one very, very tricky, uh, tricky part uh, the kissing. of the procedure yeah, because you cannot cross um, the, the bottle inside. Because I think the undulation is quite peculiar. That is one of the challenges, and I think uh, you're using a, a EBU guide, if I if I remember correctly, which means that yeah. as you push in and out, sometimes that um, mm -hmm. device may, you know, um, the, the edges of the stand may be may be affected by the guide. So it will be interesting to see how this goes. Yes. I see you're sort of using a balloon anchor technique over there. Yes. yes. And this is, uh, what is the size of the side branch balloon that you're trying to put in? Uh, 2.0. 2.0 by 20. Uh, by, by 15, so I uh, I try to another uh, smaller balloon. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a double balloon, like a glider available in uh, Vietnam? No. We so the question is whether a glider balloon is available in Vietnam? Uh, uh, no, the answer is no. No, no. Is that a fresh 2.0 balloon that you were trying to push in just yeah. now? Yes, yes, yes it's yeah. fresh one. Yeah. A new t is that a new 2.0 balloon? Yes, yes. Is So what do you think about the UI position of the side brain? But at least the part I think all of us have had this. I think 
think this has happened to all of us, and uh, it's usually um, a headache. You know, we all have to decide whether this is in the, the oh, but this goes to the nice. So I think yeah, it's probably correct. It's an angle, yeah. yeah Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Theoretically, about the this. Uh, so uh, from the panelists, uh, what do you think about the size of the uh, cutting capitals here? Is uh, certain French? Uh, Any one of you use uh, eight French for this case? So the question is uh, whether this would be uh, whether you would use an eight French. Uh, That's a good question. I think yeah. this case is seven French, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Seven I French. think seven French is probably what I would yeah. do too. It's probably enough unless I have a plan for Dodo. Yes. unless I plan for a dedicated two stand technique, uh, um, a simultaneous kissing stand. Yeah. I, I would. I think a two a seven French would be adequate. Yes. In the, my. Uh, there was a nice, uh, there was a 1.5 balloon, I think, that went across. So. Yes, already across. So now I change to a uh, 2.0 balloon. Okay, now you can see here. So. Okay. Nice. So this is the demonstration of the bomb so that I'm going to move the, 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 the balloon in the LED to get into the balloon. So that the bomb will be able to get the bomb in the second place and the second place will be easier. The kỹ thuật will be able to get Okay, now up to uh, 275 non-compliant balloon. Or... À, các bạn cũng cần lưu ý rằng là lúc vậy có một câu hỏi rằng là để à, tối ưu hóa vấn đề can thiệp thì người ta có dùng iVerse thì có một bà bà vừa nói là ta nhớ, nhớ cái quy tắc là năm sáu bảy tám là sau khi chúng ta tiến hành can thiệp ta dùng iVerse ta đo cái diện tích lòng mạch năm năm ở đây là ở diện tích là stent tối thiểu ở mũ sáu là ở động mạch liên thứ trước bảy là chỗ carina chỗ trong ba và tám là thân trùng thì thế là quy tắc là năm sáu bảy tám thì là tối ưu hóa vấn đề can thiệp thì bệnh nhân này là bệnh nhân chúng ta phải dùng chúng ta tự cầu cũng khá là khó khăn để nhiều suy tiêu hóa nên càng tối ưu hóa thì cái tỷ lệ biến chứng càng thấp hơn thì chúng ta cần nhớ quy tắc là năm sáu mươi tám. Have you attempted this on the radio? We can. I mean, no. I mean, as long as it's seven French, so it's a slender, so it doesn't matter. And talking about eight French, I can't remember when the last time I've used an eight French for coronary for some time now. So normally most of the complex I keep to seven French nowadays. Yeah, I was still just thinking along the same lines, but I think for stability, the, the femoral approach would def definitely is more reassuring. Um, and I think I agree, yeah, 8 French usually I think for like CTOs or something like that, but most times 7 French, uh, you know, for complex work is adequate. So now we do alternative inflation first. Okay, up to the 18, 20. Okay. Okay, now for the cells, 80, 20, 21, 22, okay, now, now we do, uh, at this uh, kind of uh, GE machine, we can use uh, stand this uh, option to see more clearly about the stain and balloon, stand this please. Okay, I'll show it. Can you see the stand this view? No. Okay, now we do. Yes, we can see very clear the stand boost. Uh, so uh, I just remind you that you, you still have uh, five minutes left uh, okay, before now we close the section. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now I think the final piece is on by Swiss. Thank you. Bye bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Very good. Bye bye. 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 Bye so, Professor Hung, the decide to repeat with a 4.5 balloon. 
Okay. Yes. We will uh, take a picture before our service. Okay. So just take a picture. Of this okay. One. Yes. And, and now we do the uh, BOT. The last BOT. Okay, just use a wipe on the yes, the sex. Yeah. The sex, okay. Yes. Move, move, move. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Move, move, move. 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 Okay, now I use uh, 4.5 by uh, 8 okay. for the last BOT. I think even without IVERS, I would suspect that you will need a POT in this case because yeah. the, the, you know, the, the proximal part of the stand yeah. um, does look like it needs some help. Yeah, yeah, I think so. This is maybe the angle, may have some uh, thing. Okay, I think here we do this, this again. Okay, okay, let's go. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, 14. 14. Okay. 15, 16, 15. Okay, okay. okay. Okay, how we uh, do the one shot to make sure everything's okay and then we will do IVERS. So, don't you, don't you think about the uh, angiography? I think the results look really nice. I think I am uh, quite uh, compatible with it. Uh, it looks really good. Yeah, so I go to do IVERS. Uh, Sorry for don't have enough the time to show you Ivers. So but we still need to do Ivers for okay, this person. Okay, let's go to the Ivers. I think this is a very nice result, uh, Prof Hong and uh, yeah. uh, Doctor Dad and your and uh, Doctor Le and your team. Uh, it's a very nice result uh, from the uh, Vietnam National Heart Institute. So I congratulate you on your on your excellent success. Um, I agree that you know you would of course have to complete with the IVERS, but yes. uh, this is wonderful and thank you very much for a very nice live demonstration to Sing Life. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you so much and bye bye. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And we would like to close. Um, we like to close the session and thank uh, my co-chair Dr. Kwang as well as all the panelists. Thank you very much. Please uh, stay on for the next uh, lunch symposium. Thank you. Yeah. Mọi người có câu hỏi gì cho cái ca truyền trực tiếp với cả hai bài báo cáo rồi không ạ?
bác sĩ để các bác sĩ can thiệp nhỉ Đấy, có câu hỏi gì không có comment gì không bác sĩ Ờ, em muốn hỏi tí là uh, anh Thái có thể giải thích thêm về cái chỗ mà ông ấy chọn, uh, ông giải thích về chỗ mid giữa cái kích thước của cái LD với cả cái thân trung mà ông chọn cái style cho nó phù hợp. Cái này uh, giáo sư Hùng muốn giải thích rồi, tức là có hiện tượng là bất tương xứng giữa cái động mạch liên thân trước với cả động mạch mũ qua, à động mạch nhà thân trung. Thì qua khảo sát bằng Ivers thì thấy đường kính của độ, động mạch liên thân trước là 3,5 mm, trong khi đó đường kính của thân trung là 4,5 thì người ta sẽ chọn một số stand gì mà có thể giãn nở được tốt nhất thì một số các stand có thể thủ thuốc thế hệ mới hiện nay thì cái, cái độ giãn nở khá là tốt cả từ cái kích cỡ mà ban đầu của nó ví dụ đây người ta chọn stand synergy là 3,5 thì chúng ta phải xem cái cái đường kính tham khảo là giãn nở tối đa là bao nhiêu để không gây biến dạng stand vì khi stand mà càng nở to thì cái mắt nó sẽ bị biến dạng và stand bị co ngắn lại thì chúng ta sẽ phải chọn stand gì mà nó giãn nở tốt nhất mà ít biến dạng nhất ở đây thì thầy Hùng đã chọn ngày Stan Synergy. À, em xin phép hỏi là à, tại sao ở đoạn uh, LD2 nó cũng có tổn thương ấy. Thì lúc đấy thầy chọn chính đường là như nó bóng phục thuốc đúng không ạ? Sao mình không là Stan đấy? Vâng. À, đối với cả trường hợp mà tái hẹp trong Stan thì hiện nay có hai chiến lược. Thứ nhất là dùng bóng phủ thuốc hoặc là dùng Stan. Mà Stan hiện nay mà có bằng chứng tốt nhất là Stan Everolimus là điều trị tái hẹp. Nó phụ thuộc vào cái hình thái tái hẹp là như thế nào thì lựa chọn chiến lược uh, dùng bóng hay là uh, dùng uh, stand tiếp theo nhưng mà trong trường hợp này là tái hẹp hoàn toàn nằm trong stand và đó là multi focal tức là nó tính từng điểm một thôi thì cái này thì liên quan đến cái cơ chế ở đây là cái cơ chế tái hẹp do stand underside và chúng ta nhìn rõ là stand kích cỡ khá là nhỏ so với kích cỡ mạch vậy thì thầy hùng chọn cái cái bóng phủ thuốc thì được đánh như hai mục tiêu thứ nhất là chúng ta dùng cái bóng phủ thuốc cỡ to hơn một chút thì thì stand sẽ nở tốt hơn và ta dùng luôn được cái, cái thuốc của bóng phủ thuốc đó để chống hiện tượng tái hẹp sau này. Do vậy chúng ta chọn kỹ thuật ở đây là kỹ thuật là dùng bóng phủ thuốc. Và chúng ta cần lưu ý rằng là sau khi dùng bóng phủ thuốc thì chúng ta cũng đây có ai vớt chúng ta cũng phải kiểm tra lại là cá nhân như điểm của bóng phủ thuốc là có thể nó gây nứt vỡ mảng sơ vữa và trên cơ sở đó có thể hình thành huyết khối chúng ta sẽ kiểm tra lại bằng siêu cho lọc mạch. Nếu cái hiện tượng nứt vỡ đây không quá nặng nề thì chúng ta có thể yên tâm còn nếu trường hợp mà nó nứt vỡ ra mà nguy cơ nó có thể gây tắc mạch cấp thì nó chúng ta phải lựa chọn phương án đặt stem à, em thấy họ có hỏi là tại sao à, mình, trước khi mà mình dùng bóng phủ thuốc mình không tối ưu trước bằng cutting colon hay một cái bóng khác thì lý do tại sao trường hợp này mình không tối ưu trước à chính xác là thế đúng là một bác sĩ bác sĩ hùng là làm nghiên cứu sinh về đề tài bóng phủ thuốc nên hỏi yêu cầu đúng theo quy trình nhưng mà quy trình nó cũng phải linh hoạt và trong trường hợp này là huyết động không ổn định và huyết động không ổn định thì chúng ta phải chọn cái phương án mà nhanh nhất rút nhanh nhất thì do thầy hùng đã chọn phương án là chúng ta đưa bóng phục thuốc vào nong luôn chứ còn nếu mà tối ưu hóa ra chúng ta sẽ dùng bóng áp lực cao trước để tạo thuận cái mảng sơ vữa đó vì thường thường nếu tái hẹp là cái mảng sơ vữa này khá là cứng và nở không đơn giản và chúng tôi đã làm rất là nhiều rồi cứ khi dùng bóng bơm bóng lên nó lại trôi vì cái mảng sơ vữa nó rất là chắc nên chúng ta phải tạo thuận trước bằng bóng áp lực cao nhưng trong trường hợp này do huyết động ổn định chúng ta phải là rút ngắn thời gian làm can thiệp để chúng ta đặt ngay bóng phủ thuốc để can thiệp luôn. À, em xin phép hỏi một câu ạ. Ờ, trong cái, cái can thiệp tổn thương phân đôi ở ca này thì thầy Hùng thầy sử dụng cái kỹ thuật DK Grass thì uh, em muốn hỏi anh là cái kỹ thuật này thì so với những cái kỹ thuật uh, can thiệp mà tổn thương phân đôi khác thì nó có ưu điểm gì hơn ví dụ như là mini cắt chẳng hạn và kỹ thuật hiện nay uh, theo khuyến cáo của hội tim mạch châu âu ấy, thì kỹ thuật đi cây cắt là kỹ thuật gọi là chuẩn trong can thiệp phân chung trừ trường hợp mà những cái tổn thương nó hình thái nó không phù hợp vì sao như vậy tại vì khi dùng kỹ thuật đi cây cắt thì chúng ta luôn luôn giữ oai theo, theo từng nhánh nên không bao giờ hiện tượng mất oai và rất là an toàn. Trong trường hợp ví dụ chúng ta làm kỹ thuật là culot hoặc là kỹ thuật TAP thì khi chúng ta đặt tay chúng ta phải rút cái đặt oai chúng ta phải re-oai lại. Trong khi đó dùng kỹ thuật DK class chúng ta luôn luôn giữ oai ở các nhánh và luôn luôn giữ được dòng chảy. Nên do đó những biến cố để ngăn ngừa những biến cố người ta dùng kỹ thuật DK class 
Và cái lợi điểm của DJ Class so với cả trường hợp Mini Class thì nó vẫn dựa trên nền của Mini Class hoặc là thậm chí Nano Class. Nhưng ở đây là khác là gì? Chúng ta dùng là DJ ở đây vì là Double Kissing. Chúng ta sẽ Kissing trước khi chúng ta đặt Class, ta đặt Stand vào nhánh bên. Sau đó Class, xong Kissing lần đầu. Sau đó Rewind lại, xong Kissing lần hai, xong BOT. Thế là từng bước nó như thế. Thì cái lợi điểm nó là gì? Tại sao dùng DJ cho nó phức tạp, tốn rất là nhiều bóng? Thì lợi điểm là gì? Khi chúng ta được đi cây class là cái sinh lần đầu thì chúng ta đưa cái rewind vào rất là dễ dàng và cái lợi điểm thứ hai của nó là chúng ta dùng bóng rất dễ dàng đưa qua so với cả trường kỹ thuật uh, class kinh điển là gì chúng ta đặt ba lớp stand đấy thì sau khi chúng ta rút oai ra cái vấn đề rewind là vấn đề là một vấn đề ở đây thứ hai là đưa bóng vào rất khó khăn thì thường phải chọn cái bóng rất là nhỏ để đưa qua được cái ba lớp stand đó trong khi đó nếu chúng ta dùng kỹ thuật đi cây class thì chúng ta trực tiếp đưa hai quả bóng kỹ sinh vào luôn không cần phải dùng bóng nhỏ Do vậy, cái kỹ thuật DKC nó tạo thuận cho bác sĩ can thiệp rất là nhiều. An toàn hơn, tạo thuận hơn và dễ dàng làm hơn. Mà dù dung cụ nó sẽ tốn hơn. Mời con hỏi gì không ạ? Em hỏi gì không? Bác sĩ. Ừ, tức là khoảng 50-70% là dựa trên NGO Thì mình cái vấn đề lựa chọn của giữa cái FFA và IVERT thì mình ưu tiên cái nào hơn nào? Tùy những cái vị trí tổn thương, em hỏi là nó rõ hơn ừ. à, Đối với trường hợp mà quẩn tăng thiệt thân trung ấy, thì chúng ta có hai lựa chọn sử dụng được đó là IVERT hoặc FFA À, cái, cái sử dụng hai cái nó nó bổ sung cho nhau tốt như thế nào tức là dùng f chúng ta có thể khẳng định luôn là cái tổn thương đấy có gây hẹp quấy nghĩa hay không và chỉ định cho can thiệp rất là rõ ràng còn nếu chúng ta dùng iVert thì cũng mang lại lợi ích nhưng mà cái lợi ích đấy là lợi ích cộng gộp tức là chúng ta có thể tiên lượng rằng cái tổn thương đấy có hẹp có ý nghĩa không và chúng ta có thể tối ưu hóa vấn đề can thiệp và để tiết kiệm thì chúng ta dùng iVert thì sẽ tiết kiệm hơn cho bệnh nhân phải dùng một thủ thuật thôi. Còn trừ trường hợp nếu trường hợp chúng ta hơi phân vân, ví dụ chúng ta dùng iVert thấy diện tích lòng mạch nó khoảng xấp xỉ 6 mm vuông chẳng hạn, đấy là cái lúc mà cái gọi là cái, cái tổn thương borderline thì lúc đó chúng ta mới cần phải làm FFA để khẳng định rằng cái tổn thương đấy có cần phải can thiệp. Còn thông thường thì hiện nay chúng tôi sẽ sử dụng iVert luôn chứ không dùng FFA trong trường hợp mà cái tổn thương mà hẹp khoảng trên 50% đến 70%. Câu hỏi tiếp theo. À, thầy, thầy Đê Thầy Hùng thì dùng kỹ thuật mini crash tức là chúng ta nhô vào khoảng tầm từ 0,5-1mm là là tối ưu Tuy nhiên khi mà cái góc mà nó càng nhỏ thì nó sẽ có hiện tượng là phía đầu gần đến phía thân trung sẽ nhô vào nhiều hơn và phía đầu xa sẽ nhô vào ít hơn thì chúng ta sẽ sẽ căn căn theo là phía đầu đầu xa để làm sao nó phủ được hết lỗ còn đầu gần thì đương nhiên nó sẽ nhô nhiều hơn thì cái, cái tối ưu nhất là khoảng sắp xỉ được 0,5mm là tối ưu Tính từ chỗ lỗ, lỗ của mũ, nhô vào chỗ cái carina ấy. 